comes to thee. Let thy precious blood apply. Keep me ever, ever near thy side. Every day, every hour, let me feel thy cleansing power. May thy tender love to me bind me closer, closer, Lord, to thee. Through this changing world below, lead me gently. I can never, never lose my way. Every day, every hour, let me feel thy cleansing power. May thy tender love to me bind me closer, closer, Lord, to thee. Let me love thee more and more, till this fleeting, fleeting life is o'er, till my soul is lost in love, in a brighter, brighter world above. Every day, every hour, let me feel thy cleansing power, may thy tender love to me, bind me closer, closer, Lord, to thee. seek out even more of your word, even more of your truth. For Father, we need your truth. We need your guidance. We need your direction. We need everything we need in this life, Father, we get from you. 
all the trials, all the tribulations, all the pain and sorrow, Lord. You will bring us and give us comfort. You will give us strength. Also in our joy, Father. You share in our joy, Father. We know, Lord, as your children, we, we will miss your mark. We will sin because we are sinful creatures in our character. And so we pray, Lord, and we ask for your forgiveness of any sins, any trespasses we have done. We also, we also ask, Lord, that all those that are not your children today, all those who are unbelievers and unsaved, Father, you will come into their life, you will come into their heart to change them, to turn them, to reveal unto them that you are God and Lord, Lord who has mercy on them, who wants to save them from sin, who wants to wash them of their sin. And we pray, Lord, that you will bring that conviction to that person today. That they are changed, they are molded and shaped by you, Lord, to turn away from the darkness that is sin, the darkness that is the world. And that they come to you, Lord. Come to you wanting to be healed, wanting to be washed, wanting to be called yours this day. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's turn to the New Testament. Turn to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1. And we will look at or cover verses 18 through 25 of 1 Corinthians. So let's turn to that book and start reading it in chapter 1, beginning in verse 18. For the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the cleverness of the clever I will set aside. Where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not come to know God, God was well pleased through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. For indeed, Jews ask for a sign, and Greeks search for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, to Jews a stumbling block, and to Gentiles foolishness. But to those who are called both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. Because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. Many of us might believe that the wisest of individuals are those locked in those colleges, those universities, professors, scholars, Great individuals with many accreditations and many diplomas. They have many years of experience in the sciences, engineering, and literature. It is true they are wise in their profession. But when you think about it, any wisdom gained in this world is the wisdom of the world. If the wisdom you have acquired is not from God's Word and the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart, such wisdom comes from the world. And from a believer's point of view, this wisdom, although probably useful in this life, is totally useless in the next and so we see here, Paul tells that the word of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing. 
This word that he is speaking about is God's total revelation, the very gospel itself in all its fullness. It is the message of the incarnation, the message of the crucifixion, the entire divine plan and its provisions for redemption of sinners. It is the entirety of Scripture, God's truth. And this is where foolishness comes into play. There is another word that comes to mind. Moron. Foolishness translate, translates the word which means moron, moron as deri derived its meaning. That those who are foolhardy are just ignorant of the truth and that these individuals are perishing which means they remain lost in their sin. Every human being is either in the process of salvation or in the process of destruction. How you respond to the cross will determine what process you are going through. The simple answer is, those who reject the cross which means those who reject Jesus Christ are going through destruction. To them the cross is nonsense. To them it is a sham. To the believer it is the wisdom we crave and earnestly need. Paul quotes Isaiah chapter 29 verse 14 For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and the cleverness of the clever I will set aside. Jesus Christ often made comments that the ways of God is not the ways of man. You can spend your entire life seeking out earthly wisdom, but if you do not seek out God, what becomes of that earthly wisdom you have gained? It becomes useless. It becomes nothing. I can imagine seeing Paul screaming out these titles he mentions in verse 20. He says, where is the wise man? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Wisdom of the world is unreliable, can't be trusted. The scribe normally recorded events, and here there was nothing to record. The debater usually argued about philosophy, which is nothing more than earthly wisdom. To God, the wisdom of the world is utter foolishness. It is moronic. This is God's wisdom. God established that men could not know Him by human wisdom. For if we could, that would exalt man. So God designed to save sinners through the preaching of the message that was so simple the wise of the world saw it as nonsense. It is ridiculous. And those who do believe, salvation is guaranteed through our faith in Jesus Christ, which again the world sees as nonsense. The Jew wanted proof. They wanted signs. They wanted to see with their own eyes. Many Jews considered the gospel of Jesus Christ to be foolishness. They believed that the Messiah would be a conquering king who came with signs and with wonders. However, when Jesus was actually here, he did not restore the throne of David. And besides, 
he was executed like a common criminal. So how could he be their long-awaited Savior, long-awaited Messiah? To Jews, this became a stumbling block, something they could not cross over. To the Greeks or Gentiles, they search for wisdom. There is that word again, wisdom, but that wisdom is earthly wisdom. The Greeks wanted proof too but they wanted it through human reason, human means. They wanted it through ideas and processes they could set forth, they could discuss, and they could debate about. They were not searching for divine truth, though. All they wanted was to argue the novelty of this belief. The Greeks did not believe in resurrection. They certainly did not see Christ as even being equal with their own Greek gods. To them, to die is to be defeated. So where is the victory? To the Greek, all of this was foolishness. Paul preached the only true sign and the only true wisdom is that Christ is crucified. This alone is the message that he preached, that he shared. In this message alone, it had the power to save all who believed, be it Jew or be it Greek. For believers, we know that there is no foolishness or weakness with God. This is just a play on words that Paul mentions. It means, though, no matter what we do and what we gain here in this fallen world, especially wisdom, nothing even gets close to the wisdom of God. To those who are called, that being believers, the cross may be pointless, it may be foolishness, it may be a stumbling block, it may be irrelevant to man's proud natural mind. But again, to the believer, all that means nothing though. It actually displays God's greatest power and His greatest wisdom. Christ crucified. The good news of Jesus Christ sounds foolish to many, to the Jew and to the Greek. In a world that worships power, that worships wealth and influence, Jesus Christ came as a humble servant and offers his kingdom to those who have faith. This looks foolish. To the world. It looks like nonsense. It's ridiculous. But Christ is our power, the only way sinful man can be saved. And to the unbeliever, yes, it is foolishness. Death seems to be the end of the road, at least from the Greek perspective. Yet Jesus did not stay dead, did he? His resurrection showed his power over death. And he will save us from eternal death and give us everlasting life when we trust him as Lord and Savior of our life. This is a simple message, and yet many will not accept it. They will try to use other ways to gain eternal life, such as being good, being charitable, being wise, 
and so on. All their attempts will not work. The foolish that accept his invitation are actually the wisest of them all. Because they, or we, will live forever with our Lord and our God. So Christ crucified, so simple a message. But so many will not accept it. Amen. to be like Jesus as your children. We want to be like him in every aspect of who we are. Be loving, be merciful, be charitable, be giving. We also, Lord, know that we are sinful creatures, Lord, in our very hearts. And so, Father, in this new day, this new week that before us, we pray, Lord, that we can be the image of Christ to this sinful world. But also, Lord, that you will continually convict us of our sinful ways. Continually bringing to our knowledge that we, Lord, continually sin. But we know as we sin, you forgive us, Lord, when we ask to be forgiven. We fall short, yes, Lord, but you lift us up. We miss your mark, but yet, Lord, Father, you direct us even more. 
We pray, Lord, that again in this new week that's before us, Lord, that opportunities be given, that situations be given, Lord, that we can be that witness you need, Lord, to share your good news, the message of salvation to a lost world. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.